Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's Sarah from I Am Simple Natural Life. This channel is here to give you ideas, inspiration, tips and tricks on ways to live um, a life that feels more natural and authentic to you. And I talk a lot about what I do and my experience um, as a way to give you some examples, really, of things that you could think about. And today I'm talking about home education. It's something I know a lot of you are quite interested in because it's a little bit different to what the, the majority do. And today I'm talking about the three top myths that I come up against um, with people with their misunderstanding of what home education is. Specifically, I'm talking about um, unschooling, which is the type of home education that we do. I home educate three of my children and we do unschooling, which means that we're completely unstructured. We don't follow a curriculum and we're very much led by the children in terms of what their interests are, their style of learning. Um, and we, we, we're quite hands off in terms of um, providing, there's no forced learning. So three myths. Number one, my child needs friends. So this is something that people will say to me all the time when they're, they're kind of talking about why they home educate, oh, sorry, why, when we're talking about why I home educate, they will then say, oh, yeah, but my, my children need, need to be around other kids. My children need their friends. OK, this is sit down and hold on to your hat here because this could come as a shock. But my children are home educated, but they don't spend the day sat inside a cupboard. They don't spend the day locked inside a bedroom. They don't spend the day locked inside the house. OK, we are out and about. We are seeing people all the time. We see we go to structured groups, which could be, I don't know, like karate or violin or swimming or whatever. We go to unstructured groups like formal meetups. Um, we can spend all day socialising with people if we want. And we can also have quiet days when we choose not to. But the thing is, it, it's always our choice. So when people people talk about school like it's some great opportunity to socialise, and yet we all have heard, probably when we were at school, teachers saying, you know, you're not here to socialise. And yet that's a big concern that parents have about um, taking their children out of school is that somehow they will be missing out socially. And it's just not true. Socialisation is different, certainly for home educated children. They don't, within a school environment, the, the socialisation is very much limited really to children of around your same age. Um, and obviously it can only happen in the, the very small little blocks of time, if you're lucky, morning break and afternoon break and lunchtime. But I know some schools don't even do all three and it, it depends on your age. Um, so I don't know, what's that? An hour and a half or something, um, maybe, of socialisation um, just with those children that you're around. And whether you like them or not, they're the children that go to your school. That's who you need to spend your time with. So like it or lump it. Uh, so socialisation for my children, as I've said, is, is a very fluid thing. So we can we can meet with people when we want. We don't have to when we don't want, um, because, you know, we all have days when we wake up and just think, oh, just want to chill. You know, some days we don't want to be sociable, but other days we really want to see people and we just we want to do that all day. And we can we we can do it however we like. And I love that. And I love the fact that they socialise very much in mixed age groups. So well, if we're talking about playing socialisation kind of stuff, um, as opposed to just being out and about in the real world, talking with people at the shops and, and people here, there and everywhere. But in terms of actual um, kind of making kiddie friendships or whatever, those, the age ranges will be, you know, we could go to a, a home ed group and there could be children that are 16 there all the way down to you know little toddlers um and that is that's real life and i love that so we don't have those stories in our house of people that are older are kind of cooler or 
um, older children, like looking like, oh, that's babyish, um, and all that kind of stuff that kind of I see a lot with with sort of kids that go to school. Um, because that's how school is structured and it's you know you you're allowed to do more things when you as you get older and all this kind of stuff and we just don't have that and the mixed age groups in terms of socialization is works really well because the younger children can look up and learn from the older children in terms of what they're doing and the older children are there to help guide the younger children but also to learn from them um and it just it works really well and what happens a lot in school in terms of the the bullying and some of the nastiness that goes on um just doesn't happen in my my experience we haven't ever in all the years that i've been home educating we we haven't had any of that um and i don't know if it's just because the children feel more secure and more comfortable in their environment rather than in the school environment um or if it's if it's they don't feel the need to, to be getting that control back or why it happens in schools. I've got lots of theories based on just my personal opinion, so I won't go into them because that's not particularly helpful. It's not um, science backed. I'm just telling you the, what I've seen and what works for us. So that myth about, you know, that children that are home educated um, don't need friends or, you know, that's not important to them. That's just nonsense. Um, everybody needs friends, whatever that looks like. Um, everybody needs some kind of level of friendship. So that's important to us, just as it is for any child that goes to school. And my children have so many opportunities to socialise every day and all day, should they wish. Number two, what have I got? I've got a little list here. Um, oh, people will say, so are you a teacher then? Or, you know, are you qualified to be a teacher? How would you know what to teach them? No, no, I'm not a teacher. No, I'm not qualified as a teacher. Um, and no, you don't have to be qualified as a teacher. And no, there aren't set subjects that you have to teach your children. So the law I'm talking about in the UK, the law is that you need to provide a suitable education um, for your child, but what, um, what that looks like is very much dependent upon your child. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So everybody can teach their children. And in fact, this is what it comes down to. As unschoolers, we don't even teach, teach our children. So we are led by the child and I, I would say I facilitate their learning. So if they're interested in something, you know, we can get resources from the library or from our own books. We've got the internet. We can look up whatever we want to look up. We can do whatever research we want to do. We can go out into the real world and find out the answers. We can, we can do it how we wish. There is no curriculum that we follow some people some home educators do follow the curriculum be it the national curriculum or alternative curriculums but you don't need to do that there is no um, legal obligation to follow the curriculum and what i think sometimes we don't understand um, as parents particularly because most of us have been through the school system as well when you're at school it's positioned very much these are the things that you need to know and we have just accepted that as kind of as gospel, really, that this is, these are the things that you need to know to become a good human being. But actually that, it's a fluid thing. So the curriculum does change. Some people say the curriculum is really quite out of date, actually, and not, um, not that relevant to um, the lives, preparing children for their future lives. But I'm not going to get into that. Basically, you don't, there is no, teachers are qualified in teaching like the national curriculum, um, but you don't have to follow that curriculum and you don't have to teach in that way. So I'm not sitting the children down at a certain time of day and saying, right, now you're going to do this maths exercise. And the other thing 
is actually if we've all been through the school system then you know particularly in lockdown and and parents really struggled or even with homework parents can struggle to know how to even do this to help their children with this stuff um which doesn't make sense because if we've all been through the school system and we've been taught all this stuff that we need to be that we need to know as to be good human beings then we should know this stuff um, and we should be able to help them but we can't because actually some of it is just doesn't it's not relevant to to how we live it's not relevant to anything that we do and so we don't know how to do it and so with unschooling we we just scrap all of that basically and we we learn through through life we learn through everything that we do so if we're baking that's like science and reading and um some maths and you know you're working out the quantities and whatever we can do um science experiments if we want but we don't break it down usually into these little narrow subjects you know if we are interested in something then we're interested in that whole thing and we don't it, we don't do a thing called english and we don't do a thing called maths we it's just what it is you know if you go shopping and you're trying to you're working out is it better to buy the big milk or the, the smaller milk or whatever you're doing maths but you you wouldn't ever think to yourself oh i went to the supermarket and did some maths today because actually you were just going to the supermarket and you were working out what the best price was for the milk in terms of what you needed and whatever so yes it's maths but you don't have to break it out into those rigid um subjects and number three my child needs structure so a lot of parents will say this to me um i don't know i guess when they're they're kind of maybe feeling a bit uncomfortable about the fact that i'm doing something different to them and maybe they need to justify it which they don't i don't mind you know people do do what you want you do you that's the key and for me home education is me and that's what we do um, and for you maybe you're really comfortable with school but then you don't need to justify it you know you do it just because that's you know you've really you've thought about it you've thought about everything that comes with it and you know why you why you're doing it and why you think it's the best thing um but this is something that people will say to me and it does feel like they're kind of justifying they'll say but my, my child needs structure or they need they need the routine and again this this sort of suggests that home educated children probably particularly unschooled children are just running riot and doing what the heck they like whenever and yes we don't have a structure and we don't have a rigid routine but unschooling is very much led by the individual child so if you have a child that really does need that structure and i would question as well is it just because that's all they've known you know if, if you're going to school and you're put into this system it can be quite scary i guess it's it's like they say with birds don't they if birds are kept in a cage when you open the cage quite often they won't leave because they don't they don't know that they could that they could do that and that that big outside world seems quite scary so that could be part of the thing with the structure is actually if you are used to a situation where you're told what to do all day and what to think and what to learn to suddenly not the thought of not having that structure and actually being in control of your own learning could feel quite scary for some people perhaps thinking aloud here however that's i'm talking more about just the day-to-day -day structure if you've got a child that does actually need that structure and that's what they thrive on then you'd provide that structure so that's the beauty of of unschooling it really there is no child that unschooling doesn't suit because unschooling by its very nature is respectful of that child and you would you meet the needs of that child whatever they are so if they like the structure then you would work with them to put in place the structure that they like you know so you can you can be as timetabled as you like and if you want to do the national curriculum or whatever if that floats your boat then you you can do that um 
and that's the beauty of it so there are there's no no rules on how to do it it doesn't have to look like anarchy um it can look really very organized and very structured if your child loves doing i don't know equations they can do equations all day if they want um yes you want to be encouraging them to try different things and providing the facilitating the environment where they can access lots of different stuff and they you're not uh narrowing them but also some children are just really passionate i've got one child that gets extremely passionate about a subject and she will learn everything she can she just absorbs whatever subject um and then she'll move on but for that time she gets completely into it completely into it and it's just lovely just to let her do that and to let her um just be herself and to learn how she learns so I think it, it would be really sad when she is completely absorbed in a subject or in, in something. If I was then saying to her, come on, let's go and you've done enough of that. Let's go and do this. Let's go and do this. Um, because actually, I know from myself, I, I don't know if you ever get into a flow state with things that you enjoy doing. So I love writing and that's a big part of my work is writing. Um, and I get into a flow state and I, I just that's. That's my focus at that point. And if my husband was coming in all the time saying, come on, come and do some baking or whatever, I would find it really annoying because I'm thinking, no, I'm I'm doing this and I'm doing this really well and I'm enjoying it. And it's the same thing for children. There's, it's giving them the, the security and the flexibility and the opportunity to just learn how they naturally learn. And that's that's why we do it. So I hope that helps. Um, that was a very quick kind of top line blur, wasn't it? Um, but that's just three things that occurred to me that people often say to me and just how, how those things aren't true. And I think there's so many myths around home education um, and particularly the COVID um, distance learning stuff that's gone on with school children hasn't helped because now I think a lot of people think that what they had to do is what we do as, as home educators and it's just polar opposites so I just want people to understand a little bit more I suppose um, and I know a lot of you are kind of interested in how it works so I hope that's helped and I will see you next week bye